Hello ladies and gentlemen. For over a year now, I've been working on developing and launching the Hanged Man Project with the support of thousands of individuals from around the world who are sick and tired of the destructive direction of humanity towards the planet, but realize that the solution doesn't really rest in a new political or economic decision, nor will it be found with some new age belief that there's a miraculous spiritual awakening happening while the direction that they propose is nothing more than a new psychological form of governance. While looking at the current condition of the planet, just in the past hundred years, humanity has depleted over 60% of the world's grasslands, forests, topsoil, lakes, rivers, and farms, most of it irreversible. We see today that the most highly technological advanced nation in the world can't seem to plug a hole in the earth that has been leaking millions of gallons of oil, as well as volatile organic compounds into the Gulf every single day for the past 70 days. You can rest assured that if BP and the federal government could profit a few billion dollars by plugging the hole, that it would have been plugged in under 24 hours. However, this isn't the case. Is it just a coincidence that BP's CEO, Tony Hayward, sold 1.4 million euros of his BP stock shares approximately a month before the oil rig explosion? Is it a coincidence that the investment giant Goldman Sachs also sold over $250 million of their BP stocks two weeks prior to the explosion? Is it a coincidence that reports from crew members on the oil rig prior to its explosion made numerous claims that using salt water in place of heavier drilling fluid would potentially lead to an explosion, yet those claims were ignored and the faulty method persisted? Is all of this coincidence? There are many major media events that involve fire and casualties that occur frequently on or around April 20th, including the Branch Davidians disaster in Waco, the Oklahoma City bombing, the Columbine school shooting, uh, Virginia Tech school shooting, and many others, just to name a few. Political, economic, financial, ecological catastrophes always seem to happen conveniently when a new agenda needs to be ushered in. But truthfully, all of this is really meaningless without context. There are literally thousands of conspiracies swarming around the internet involving New World Order, centralization of power, and the new psychological form of tyranny that's being built up around our unsuspecting minds. The danger of all these conspiracies, though, is the fact that blame is always placed on everyone and everything else except ourselves. It's a psychological habit that we unconsciously portray in which we refuse to take responsibility for governing ourselves and secretly are too afraid to initiate true revolution. That is why we're stuck in the current condition that we are. Because unconsciously, we're afraid to move out of this uh, current condition because that would be moving into uncharted territory. We're a little bit more comfortable with the tyranny that we have right now than to head into uncharted territory. And this is why you have so many groups out there and organizations that throw around words like revolt, rebellion, and revolution until, until the words lose all meaning, yet nothing ever comes of it. Revolution never, I repeat, never happens from the outside in. The only revolution that can truly be considered effective in the long run is a conscious revolution. And to give an example of this, let's just look at recent history in the United States. Imagine that what the United States is today is exactly what Great Britain was a few hundred years ago. A vast empire. A group of revolutionaries with the intention of a free and independent future for their children divorced themselves from their tyrannical government in an act of what Great Britain considered to be terrorism. So these so-called terrorists were the forefathers of the very country that over 300 million citizens now occupy with great pride. The United States. They set up a republic in which the people were the kings and queens, sovereign and free from all rulership except for that of the divine creator or whatever they chose the divine creator to be. All forms of government were intended to be under the control of the people, not the other way around. We the people were the supreme kings. So why then, in only 200 short years, is humanity and the planet that we inhabit in worse condition now than we've ever seen in history? It's not because there was a flaw in the U.S. Constitution or some legal loophole. It has nothing to do with the physical revolution that took place because the physical revolution was actually successful. However, the people over the, past, over the uh, next 200 years from the revolution on that were building this country were still just as psychologically enslaved as they were before. They weren't aware of the true nature of slavery, which is conscious and not physical. 
so they were psychologically unprepared to govern themselves as kings and queens. So physically, they were kings and queens because the constitution set it up that way. However, deep within their psyche and rooted within their hearts, they were still slaves. This is not allegory. This is not a symbolic story. This is factual. Primarily because we don't even understand how our thoughts and emotions operate or came to be, so we certainly can't comprehend where true slavery, or freedom for that matter, comes from. So because of this, I will be launching the Hanged Man Project in the upcoming months dedicated to liberation from all forms of slavery. Physical, energetic, legal, emotional, psychological, conscious, and spiritual. This project will support individuals who are bound by their legal contracts that finance the corporate monopolies. It will support individuals who are enslaved by their energetic addictions or emotional and psychological tyranny that's promoted primarily through the media or self-infliction. But primarily, this will be the first public push for a conscious revolution that includes physical action. There is no more time to waste. The longer we sit idly by while our planet is being destroyed around us by the very monster that we created, the less chance that we have of having any planet to save in the long run. So there is a mailing list to sign up with at www.hangedmanproject.com. I'll be keeping in contact with any and all of you at the grassroots level who are willing to set up events in your local area to build communities to support this effort. I will attend as many of these events as possible to speak and support the cause, but not to lead it. This isn't my cause, this is not my revolution, because revolution doesn't belong to any specific individual like a corporation does, it belongs to the evolution and liberation of all life. As far as money goes, there are many videos and music projects that I produce that many people may support if they choose. But I'm making a very clear distinction right here. The Hanged Man Project requires only the honest intentions of you, all of you. Keep your money. Spend it on healthy food. Spend it on protection and shelter for you and your loved ones. There are donation buttons on the website to support the necessary functions of this project and the videos um, that have been created that are there to purchase are there to help spread the word if you choose but I want to make it perfectly clear that aside from the music and the other ventures that I and the group Hyrosonic that I belong to besides those ventures that we do to support ourselves and our families absolutely everything I do in the name of supporting this project and spreading information to hopefully liberate humanity will always be absolutely free. I will not further the illusion that money is necessary for life to go on, because it's not. It may temporarily be beneficial, but what good does money do you when the planet can no longer bear fruit to feed its inhabitants? So I will do everything in my power to make sure that every video, book, or any material that I release in service to this cause will be absolutely free of charge or obligation. If you can afford to support the cause, and if you believe in it and want to help, then please do. However, if you cannot, I don't want you giving anything that you can't afford to give up. Your level of stability in your life, and your quality of life, is more important than anything that I can provide you. So to end this, I will leave you with a passage from the very document that our current leaders pretend to uphold. However, this goes far beyond the boundaries of every country. Listen to these words as if they are the Declaration of Independence from your own heart to the world. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. To secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. It is time to act.